It's the Mightiest Nightwear Show. Recorded live from a bedroom in Santa Clarita, California. With your virtuous, phenomenal, feel-good host, Joanne Jeanette. Music and sound effects provided by the Garage Band out there. Tonight's special guest, professional speaker, and legendary radio veteran, Catherine Johns. Tonight's highlights. Who wore it better? Find your voice. And Catherine coaches Joanne with it's all in the eyes. Now give it up for the lady who proudly wears a size 8 medium, 9 and a half size shoe, and is fascinated by shoe bills for first. Joanne Jeanette! Catherine, hey. You are so beautiful. I'm Kim. You are beautiful. Um, I, I was just watching your videos online. So your voice is beyond fantastic. Yeah. And I have a great face for radio. Yeah, no, you're beautiful. My, I love that color. My, I, my first question right off the bat, did you always have that voice or did it evolve over time? Gift from God. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My mother has the same voice. I mean, seriously, I sound like her. There, there's a little bit of raspiness, which you know they love. Can you hear it? Can yeah, yeah. Yes. Is that? Can I just ask before we go further? Are we live here? No, no, we're not live. What? Totally recorded. Can you tell me what we're doing? Absolutely. Completely confused. Okay, so you can hear me though, just fine. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So during the pandemic, I started to notice. That's fine. During the pandemic, I started to notice that all the TV people were just doing Zoom calls. Yeah. And I had, and I, I, I'm in uh, California. I'm in Los Angeles, yeah. but, I'm, but not really. I'm much far north. I'm all the way up in Santa Clarita because we uh, moved here for a job at Warner Brothers that no longer exists. By of way. course, that's how it goes. Isn't the it? pandemic like changed everything, sure which is did. fine. So we've been kind of figuring it out. And I've had like two radio jobs since I've been here. And one of them was actually in Chicago for a while Yeah, that you were working here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, but wait, I thought you were in California. Right. But see, it's you can do it anywhere. Radio. Right. Sure. You can do it anywhere. And I've done that before for agencies and stuff. Uh, one time I was juggling 22 radio stations at one time. It was insane. Yeah. That company went out of business. They always go out of business. You know how it works. Yeah, so, I do. So that's why you don't take it personally anymore. Or at least I don't. Good so, for you. I so, still do. Uh, some, you know, yes and no. But I, I, I hear you. So uh, during the pandemic, so I started doing Zoom calls and I said, well, wait a minute. I have this YouTube channel because I'm one of the original YouTubers from cool. uh, 2001 or 2002 or whenever it was it was invented. It was very different back then, though. You uploaded like, you know, your cat drag, dragging its butt on the carpet, you know, like those yeah. kind of <laughs> Yeah. Now, now it's like a whole thing and people make money. And all, now all the networks use YouTube, which is funny. But I was one of the original people. So I already had all these viewers. And uh, so I just started doing women are people show <laughs> and I would yeah. just interview women because I was like, you know what? I felt like society had forgotten that women are people. And, and I don't know if it has to do with, I do think it has a lot to do with um, the grooming and the free pornography. Yeah. I think it has warped a lot of people's brains. It has taken intimacy and human connection out and it needs that men used to have for the comforts of women or the, you know, attention or company of women have now been like replaced in sort of a way that has, and I've read studies on it. They say, stop watching porn. Stop it. It's, 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 it's it's not, it's not just ruining your sex life. It's ruining your life because you're constantly given images of women that look a particular way. So your brain is getting these signals that say women must look like this. And if they don't, you know, yeah. the objectification. Right. And, and right. so like my mom grew up where objectification was huge, right? Twiggy was kind of what started it. My understanding, right? Because women, yes, I was had, there. Okay. So my mom explained it. It was that she said it was Twiggy that really made all these women start losing weight to extremes. 
But if you go through history, women or gaining weight, because I'll never look like that. So I might as well. Right. Yeah. There's that. R- right. All right. Right. Well, wait, like back up. What, yeah. what are we doing here? So we're just this chatting. Is my question. So so then now it's called the mightiest nightly show because I had this dream to be a nightlight, a, na- a late night talk show host. OK, on gotcha. tel- you know, like Johnny Carson. Right. Because you didn't watch Johnny Carson. And I watched Joan Rivers. And anytime I saw her, I was like, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Yep. But as you know, it's a male dominated industry. Yes, I also know it is fun being a talk show host. Because you have the been best. one. So we're going to talk about you. So this is just me talking to people and, and getting to know them and then sharing it with people because there's so many people in the world that never get okay heard. So you know it's going to be on YouTube. Yeah. And yeah, how long it is it? However long. That's the thing, too. I have no rules. Okay. I'm not like a network. So you're Catherine Johns. You're a yep. radio veteran. You're a public speaker. Yes. Um, and, uh, you, you also were a co-owner of a hypnosis. I was yes. With, with Karen hand. And see, yep. I grew up, I'm in high school getting dropped off to school. I know, listening, listening to, to her. Karen hand. Yeah. So that was another big, like, you know, thing of mine too. And I kind of got to do that because I worked at kiss for seven years, Yes. But, but this is a long time ago. So I was like, yeah, I kind of, I did what it was that I had set out to do. The TV thing wasn't for me because for women, they were brutal to me. And I was actually thin and like kind of cute back then, but it still wasn't. Oh, yeah, it's so not they, the they were brutal. Let me back up for just a minute. Yeah. Yes, I'm Catherine Johns. I am a professional speaker. Yes. So in the world of professional speakers, we don't use that phrase public speaking. OK. Public speaking is the college class you took. OK. Professionals are people who actually get paid for. It. OK. All OK. Right? Yeah. No, absolutely. And so I was watching your videos. And your mission statement is essentially find your voice. Yeah. I need your help, Catherine, because I have oh, been I, trying... I think you've located your voice. No, I've Joanne. been searching for my voice since 1993. I have been searching for my voice. I have, and I've, with every job that I've had, because I don't know, I think I've had like, I worked on six morning shows, uh, 23 different radio gigs. So, but you're always playing a different role, right? So yeah. either you're your sure. giggle girl, soccer yep. mom kind of outrageous sex goddess like that like there's always like a role to play giggle girl that's one that you have to play so I'm still trying to find my voice all right and I'm lost and you're doing your own show and uh, yeah and it can be as long as you want it to be and how does it start how does it start or when or you I just go I do have well let's do it then I do have an intro that, that I play before. Okay. And great. it's, and, and it's, I, I, with the garage band, I made a song that's kind of like, it sounds like the intro of our Arsenio Hall show. It's very nineties and it's got okay. a lot of saxophone and that's sort of what, and I just call it the mightiest nightliest show. And do you add that later or you play that? I now add it, I add it later. I add it okay. later. So all we're right. already into it, girl. Your bio, how many, how many jobs do you think that you had in radio? Oh, geez. I, I couldn't. Um, seven, eight, maybe. OK. And Nine. So, Who's counting? And, and so. Larry Lujak, I mean, I don't think there's anyone who ha- owned a radio um, over the age of 30 that does not know who that is. Yeah. So you were with Larry during. I was. I was there for the beginning of the ensemble radio show. You want to hear how that started? Yes, I do. So when I joined that show, the model was a guy is funny, briefly, plays a lot of music and plays commercials. And that was a morning show. And then one day they called us into the general manager's office and said, we want Larry to interface with the news people. Oh, my God. Larry. Now, I don't know how much you remember about him. Oh, yeah. He was a solo act in a big way. And the last thing he ever wanted to do was interface with anybody. He was also really good at his job and very much a guy who said, all right, if that's what you want, that's what you'll get. So we began to interface and it was surprisingly fun and interesting. By that, I mean, surprising to him, I think. Okay. And and it turned out, so Larry and Jeff Hendricks and I, and then Les Grobstein, joined as a sports guy, right? And the four of us were the morning show. Yeah. 
and it and it was good. I mean, that's, it was, yeah, it doesn't get any bigger. It doesn't get any more powerful than what you were doing. And there should have been a hint for me, Joanne, in the people who said things to me like, you know, I listen to you every morning because I only have AM in my car. Because eventually there was FM in cars and, and WLS and stations like it were in trouble. And there was a gradual, slow erosion over time as people shifted to FM stations because they were hipper and the music sounded better. Right, it was and, crisper. Yeah, so that, that was a real shift. But in those last years of AM being big, we were really big. And, and it was so much fun. So you're on AM 890, which is a 50,000 watt powerhouse. Yeah. Now I did, I was doing news over there and I don't remember what year. It was nighttime news. I was doing fill-ins and stuff. Yeah. I want to say 2016, 2015, somewhere around there. Yeah. A man called in all the way from a section of Pennsylvania. Yeah, he that called, happened. Yeah. So you knew even in the morning with that 50,000 watt and you didn't have all the air interruption. I mean, yeah. essentially, you weren't just doing a Chicago radio show. You were doing a nationwide radio show. Well, for sure, a Midwest radio show. Right. Yeah. But you again, know, I got Indiana, a call Michigan. from a guy. Yeah, he was in some time. And of course, I Googled it. I was like, you can hear me where in some like, like Allentown, Pennsylvania or something. Yeah. You know, long, long after the Lou Jack days, when WLS was a talk station, I did a talk show in the evening. And so I had that experience where I got calls on a regular basis. And this from, was mid to late 90s, right? Uh, yes. Was I this think with I, Diane Bodkins when she was? Diana Bodkins was the program director. I love her. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I was one of your listeners. So, oh, bless your heart. So here I am trying to transition. I was a, a, a administrative assistant at Household Finance, and I had a radio, and I would stay all day. And all night and I would do data entry and mind numbing work. So of yeah. course I would yeah. play the radio. So I would, I, al I always listened to um, the station. So I, and Turi Ryder, that was another yeah. one. I'd like, I would listen to her. And, and so I was one of the people sitting there doing my data entry and love listening that. to whatever that it was that you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, did you love doing the, the talk show? You know, I love certain things about it. I had trouble doing a talk show because I was not abrasive enough. You know, the people who really, now I know there are people going, really? Because certainly there are people who think I'm abrasive, but it, the people who really succeeded in talk radio were people like Rush Limbaugh, right? Like, like now we have these guys on Fox News that I, right. that's just not me. I don't want to insult people. I don't want to hang up on people. I don't want to be mean to people. I want to have conversations with people. You want so, to find the bridge instead of create the divide, right? So that part of it was really fun, you know, where people would call me up and have a conversation with me. Um, I was in trouble a lot with the program director who would come in and say things like, you got to be mean, CJ. You got to be mean, CJ. You got to be tough, CJ. See, I read a comment you made many years ago on Facebook. I don't do Facebook anymore, but I guess we were friends on, and I remember this stuck out to me. I remember you saying that that was one of the hardest parts of it is that you'd have program directors who want you to be mean. They don't understand what it's like to be a woman. They can demonize us for the simplest of things. Really? If you're not smiling and saying, hi, sweetie, then they call you mean. So if you get really mean, then the B words coming out and you're being attacked and they're, and they're, and they're yeah. essentially making you Satan. Right. So it's, it's, and, and I don't know if men understand the position women are in I think or how don't. we're groomed or how we're groomed. Yeah, I think they don't. You're right. And the other thing I would say is I'm just too thin skinned for that. You know, I'm, I'm too sensitive. Um, I'm, uh, don't let this get around, Joanne. Okay. <laughs> Tough exterior, marshmallow on the inside. I, it just didn't feel good to me to always be provoking people and poking at them and making them mad that I didn't, that's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, eventually this station changed and maybe I changed too. Did it change the country or something? What happened? Oh, no, Did it's it... still a, it's still a talk station. No, no, but... no. I know. But I was thinking like, didn't, there were so many, how many stations changed? They turn country, they go All Spanish, the then they go back to talk, then they go back, yeah. you know, 
So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but how no, many WLS is still doing talk and they yeah. have like a, you know, a minuscule share of audience. Yeah. And I will confess every quarter when Rob Feeder runs the ratings in his column, I chortle a little bit about yeah. WLS's ratings. Yeah. Can I, I be forgiven for that? I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I mean, can you imagine I did that for I was there for 18 years. And then one day some guy wakes up and says, you know, she's not that good. Uh, Joanne, it was like a knife in my heart. I've learned that these are just opinions and I can't make everyone happy. And that's true. How much do I want to prove my worth to the universe? There's 325 million people. What just in America alone? Someone's going to get me. Someone's going to understand, you know what I'm saying? Someone's going to want to build the bridge. that's true. Yeah. Right. Somebody's and now work. I can very much go toe to toe with the men and I'm, I'm now I'm impervious to gaslighting. I used to fall for it. I used to, I used to be easily uh, persuadable with gaslighting and, and I used to, t- and I used to internalize things that were yeah. said to me. I think over the years I have grown that thick skin. It doesn't mean I, d- you have to be a complete sociopath not to care what people think. Do you see what I'm yes. saying? There's a level, sure. but how much of my day, how much can I compartmentalize it is what I've learned to do, which I'm actually quite proud of myself. It's yeah. like, am I going to hold on to this? That's a gift. You're right. That you know? to be proud of that. And then remembering, especially uh, however we look. Okay. I'm it, that's, it's, it's never enough. I, if I'm blonde, I must be dead. It's, it's, it's their perceptions due to how they see the world. Right. And so that's what you're up against. I find insults are usually very telling. When someone's insulting me, I'm going, what that says more to me about what's going on in them than me. I learn. I finally learned that skill, yeah. but I also like to build bridges. So like politically, this is yes. the thing that drives me nuts. I can be in a room with people with seven different political and we, and we don't end up taking out guns and knives and stabbing each other because I don't, I remember growing up, right? You go to school every day. I went to Catholic school. So you had to do, you know, Hail Mary and you did the, uh, our father. And then you followed it up with the Pledge of Allegiance. And in that it sure. says indivisible. We're supposed to be indivisible. Well, yes, that feels like a pipe dream right now, but. And maybe. I get that. But if we were, if we were conditioned to chant that every day, why aren't we, why aren't we using that in our daily lives? So it's like, okay, like my father, my father and I had a big thing because he voted for Trump. I voted for Hillary. I cut off his cell phone for three days. We did get in a fight about that one, but then I turned it back on. I went, am I really going to not, because I grew up at a time where you didn't, you didn't fight that much about political differences. You found that, that way to be able to get along. So, so I, it's just not a thing for me, but people make lots of money right? Selling fear. Oh, anger, they sure do. Hatred. And I don't see you as being that type. And I just, I can't be. So um, we're not talk show hosts anymore. I guess there not. No, I might. I am. Uh, I've, and the, and a religion is another one too. There's this real, I, out here in uh, California, there's this really great church that I've been going to. It's called Real Life. And it's just real life. That's it. That's all it is. Sounds good. It's, it's not, I mean, it's more, I would say it's like Jesus Christian based, but it, there's none of the formatics that you get in organized religion. And so you just go there with your neighbors. They have these great songs, right? This great band and the light show. And then it's, you just talk about real life stuff. So I've been thinking about volunteering there. And I think maybe that's what I should be doing. I think just because media has so many agendas and there's so many channels and there's so much manipulation. And I, I don't really like that. I think that might be my calling, but I need your help because I'm not good on stages because I, I did radio. I did radio. Well, yes, there is a thing about being seen, isn't there? There is. And so I, I need, I need tips. I need help. You have uh, find your voice. And so you, you go and you teach people to find their voice. I do. The eyes say it all is what you're saying. Totally. Tell me about so, this. So, well, if you look at me right now, yes, you should be seeing me looking at you. Right. But I'm not really looking at you. I'm really looking through the camera, imagining you right there on the other side. And this is where people run into trouble on virtual platforms. Sure. Now I'm looking at you on right. the screen and right. I feel a connection because I'm looking at you. But to you, 
does it look like I'm looking at you? No, now you're looking no, down. I'm looking down. I'm looking off to the side. So in order for you to perceive eye contact, I, I can't actually look at you. I have okay. to look, see you in my peripheral vision, but really look through the camera. And I hear from people all the time, Joanne, who say, yeah, but I don't like talking to a screen. I don't like talking to a camera. It doesn't feel natural. Think about being on the telephone. When you talk on the phone, you would never think of yourself as talking to the phone. Right. Right. You're talking to your friend. The right. phone is just, it's the vehicle that gets your voice to her ears and her voice to yours. Same thing with the camera and the microphone. When we think of it that way, we can sort of let go of the self-consciousness of, oh my God, I'm on camera, I'm on stage. People are looking at me and I don't, I'm not comfortable and just have a conversation. And I remember I took some class, I don't know, you know, yeah. you take a million classes over the years that you're supposed to walk out and you're supposed to observe the audience as if it is the stage, right? So you reverse it, you flip it. So like when, Interesting. Okay. You're, when you're in the audience, you're very comfortable at looking the people on the I stage. See. So they Got were it. teaching you to try to rewire your brain to walk out and observe the audience as if that is the stage, as if that is the stage. Yeah. So you trick your brain to flip it. Cool. So the audience is the performer. Right. Yeah. Right. I like it. I'm not Anything afraid that, of strangers. So that's, it's I'm not, sure not that, but how can you not feel so unbelievably vulnerable when you well, are the only moving yeah. object? You are okay. vulnerable right. and people will have opinions. I mean, just like we were talking about being on the radio, right? All, the, all day long, people are making judgments about you. Some of them will keep those judgments to themselves and some won't. No, they don't. And they come to the events. How, what kind of compliment? Like I had people come up to me and go, oh, on the radio. Uh, see, yeah. I thought you were going to be I pretty. always thought you were blonde. You know, you sounded pretty. I mean, I, I got that all the time. Right? Oh, see, I thought you were pretty. I didn't realize you had an extra, you know, a few pounds. This is yeah, like my baby making that. years when I was kind of like lumpy. I'm having babies. Yeah. Like, you know, of course I'm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess you do have a face for radio. Right. I've heard it all. Right. 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 Me too. You just too. kill and them with people kindness. can be really, really mean about it. I don't actually run into that so much as a speaker. Yeah. I know people have opinions, but most people will not come up to you and say something mean to your face. In radio, it's a little different because people feel safer with it. And they're drunk. Um, and they're drunk. Sometimes. <laughs> how, yeah. many time, how many yeah. times did, like, we'll be taking phone calls? And, like, let's say I was doing maybe, whatever my job was at the time, co-host, traffic, sidekick, whatever. Hey there, uh, tell your uh, traffic girl. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 50 years old. He's calling me a traffic girl. Over by there, she didn't, she didn't do the Dan Ryan. And I'm sitting... Sir, you're sitting around drinking. Why do you need an update on the Dan yeah, Ryan? Yeah, right now, please stay off the Dan Ryan. Right, but he needs those travel times, you know, those people. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, what was your favorite job out of all the radio gigs? Because I know that you, you're you also with John Landecker. At, uh, I was, and and there is no way you're going to get me to pick between Larry Lou, Jack, Fred Winston, and John Landecker. Really? They were all terrific. I enjoyed every one of those gigs. But really, and, you like John the best. Well, can I, <laughs> can I just say one time I said in a studio at, at WJMK, I was talking about Fred. I don't remember how it came up, but I said, Fred, that Fred is like the funniest guy in the world. Yes. John was not happy. Oh, oh, the egos came out with the guys. So. And and I understand, right? Would I? How would I feel if he's sitting there saying, "Well, my favorite side chick ever was somebody else, not me." Exactly. So I learned a big lesson. Seriously, all three of those guys, you know, they're radio greats. They're in the Hall of Fame. Yes. I still run into people who say, "I mean, I've been out of radio for twenty some years now, right?" My last radio gig caved in 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 two thousand, so okay. twenty one years, twenty two, and. Um, and people still quote things to me that you that said, they remember, right. that you don't um, even remember from, right. Oh, I, I'm like, really from inter interplay with Larry or with Fred or with John. Yeah. So I, I worked with They're both, great. uh, Landecker. I worked with him at LSFM and I worked with uh, Fred at a, it was a, a, it was called big city radio and it was yeah. a Motown format that they, they switched to all eighties. <sighs> So I did yeah. work with him there and, and he was always really fine. And I was still relatively new in radio at the time, maybe five years. So he was great with me. I, I had a great time with Fred Winston too. He, he loves fart jokes. 
I know that. He oh my loves God. them. Yes. Everything is about the farts. Yeah. Uh, so that was funny. And, and I have a good sense of humor about that stuff. Uh, now, with Larry Lujak, obviously, I grew up with that. But my, uh, this is a weird question. Did he, okay. did he live in Lombard? No, he lived in Palatine. Okay. Because for whatever reason, because I grew up in Lombard, even though everyone in Chicago calls it Lombard, but nobody yes. who lives there calls it Lombard. We call it Lombard. I say Lombard. Right. We actually and I never understand why. It doesn't, why would you, well, whatever. So All right, you grew up there with the lilacs. I did, the lilac village. And I, re, and I went to St. Pius and I remember one night we had some basketball thing where it was teachers against parents and yeah. Larry Lujak was one of the players, which was, so I don't know, maybe he had a, like a, a brother or, you know what I'm saying? I think he had someone in his family that must have grown up. Maybe, or maybe it was just a bit, you know, who knows? Yeah. And so I just remember that being the biggest deal in the whole world yeah. that now I'm a little kid and this is radio. And of course I know who he is aud audibly. But as far, I was like, which one is he? You know, right. I mean? like I, I didn't know. I didn't get, yeah, I was maybe yeah. fourth, fourth grade, third grade or something, but it was a basketball thing. So that's why I always wondered, did he grow up in Lombard? Because I just, no, he's actually night. originally from Idaho. Okay. Here's, then, here's a great story about yeah, Larry yeah, 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 yeah. That, that he didn't tell me. He told it to a Tribune reporter who did a Sunday magazine feature called The Grim Reaper of Laughs. And it had on the cover, a picture of Larry with the shroud, you know, like the Grim Reaper. Yeah. And it quoted Larry saying the, his favorite time of his whole life, like what he really looked back to and wished he could do it again, was the summer he worked as a lookout in a national forest in Idaho. What was he looking he, out for? He was looking out for fires and bear, who knows, fires, mainly. Aliens, right, but, who knows. But the point is, you don't see another soul for weeks on end. And he looked back at that as nirvana. Right? So he's a very he's private and very much a loner. Yeah, very much a loner. Isn't that interesting about someone yeah. who could be so, so good at being yeah. extroverted to actually be an introvert? Yeah, I he, find that with the guys. Yeah. They're, they're was, all a little kooky. Yeah, well, for sure. <laughs> it's just an industry of kookiness. Uh, okay, what was another thing? So I'm watching your videos all this morning and last night online. Uh, oh, you were talking about hair. You were talking about hair and how women, what is that called? Preening, pruning yes. that we do? We, you know, play with our hair, oh, ruining my, play with our hair, flip our hair, twirl our hair. Anything that has your hands in your hair is a distraction for one thing. So okay. if you're speaking or if you're, if you're in a meeting, if you're trying to come across as a professional, you want to keep your hands out of your hair. Okay. Because also I learned from a client actually, that hair is all about sex, is the, really the truth of it. That it is symbolic. And if you go through, she actually had done a master's thesis or something about the symbolism of hair in American literature. Think about in old times, women like the pilgrims, you know, covered their hair, especially after they got married. Like when they were young girls, they could have flowing hair. But okay. when they reached maturity and belonged to somebody, their, their hair was covered because their hair was only for their husband. And that remains true in some cultures today, right? There are whole places where women are cons are, have to be covered all the time because hair is all about sex. So when you're sitting in a meeting messing with your hair, the, there you go. <laughs> the, the subliminal message is availability. Usually not a good idea. I mean, I'm not saying you might want to be advertising that, but for most of us, not so I much. I do pick it and play with my hair, but I also don't, but I also don't sit around thinking about sex unless I am and I don't realize it. Yeah, see, that's that the it? thing. That's and it. I don't know I'm, what I'm but doing. It's, but it's also, it's not so much what you're thinking. It's what are they thinking, okay. right? It's the perception that it creates. Okay. I do touch my hair a lot. So now I'm worried that yeah. I'm like sexually repressed or something. A lot of it is it's stuff that goes on at the non-conscious level. Yeah. When, when I was learning how to be a presentation skills trainer, I had to videotape myself doing, when there was actual videotape, doing uh, modules from our presentation skills program. And I noticed when I saw the video back 
that I was standing in front of the room and I was talking about, you know, what to do with your hands or whatever and doing this thing with my nose all the time. Well, so what is that about besides looking stupid? Yeah, I used to do this. Yeah, that's why I didn't pick TV because I kept doing that because I was body language. Yeah, body language. So here's what happens when you're uncomfortable. There's there are little tiny, tiny capillaries in the tip of your nose and and in your earlobes that open up. You might know somebody whose ears get red when they're embarrassed or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you get this sensation that's almost below the conscious level. It's like a just this little, you know, you want to brush it away and you touch your nose. There are you know, there's sort of an old wives tale among detectives, which I guess would make it an old detective's tale that you always know they're lying if they touch their nose. And, oh. and often it actually is true. Really? In that case, right, I wasn't lying. I mean, I was delivering information, but it would be fair to say that I felt a little bit like a fraud because what do I know about this stuff? I'm brand new and I'm standing here like an expert talking to a video, right? Yeah. And I'm supposed to be a side chick sitting in a studio someplace laughing at some guy's jokes. It was a a big transition for me and it didn't feel authentic for me yet. And that manifested like this. Right, right. I don't know if I have imposter syndrome, but I'm I'm always trying, at least in old age, I wasn't always this way. So I'm trying to match the insides with the outside at all times. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. It is hard to do, and maybe it's not even appropriate at all times. I mean, sometimes I want to keep my insides to myself. Right. Better for everybody that way, including me. But, but yes, I, I would agree that as I've gotten um, older, I am more comfortable in my own skin and more willing to be seen as who I am. And, and I feel less need to placate and put on a show and you know, right. pretend to be somebody different. Um, yeah. Owning the stage. So you look very comfortable in your videos. You look very, and you look lovely. I love the green. That you Thank have. you. I, I like tell my color. clients what your audience wants most from you is you. And I sincerely believe that. And I think the challenge for speakers, not, not only professional speakers, but people who do a presentation at work in a conference room, the challenge is we get in front of an audience and we start to fake it. Like me learning my modules, right? For presentation skills training. We have an idea in our head of what we're supposed to look like, and we try to do that. And the audience picks up on that phoniness or that facade at a non-conscious level. They're not sitting there going, ah, she's faking it. They just get a sense that it's not, you know, something's a little off. If I can stand in front of an audience and be me, already I set myself up for success. And this is where I work with clients. It's really about that, letting go of some prescriptive thing of what I'm supposed to do and letting myself be real. And that takes a certain amount of confidence or, or it takes developing some confidence yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah. Now, as a woman, yes, I feel like, especially my generation and the generation that followed mine, I feel like that we were constantly given these messages through whether it be television or at the grocery store or whatever, you're still not enough. They call it, oh, sure. uh, they call, they, I think there's lots of things that they label it as, you know, they call it patriarchy trauma or, you know, but there's no way that you're not going to be subjected. I, I, CVS has taken the magazines and the tabloids. I don't know if you've noticed this in the last year and they've, they've taken them from where they used to be at eye level when you go to pay yeah. for things. You know, I don't care about George Clooney's divorce. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't need okay. that. I, I, I like do they her, still make magazines. I'm just they, stunned. They do, that, they do. But uh, Entertainment Weekly has just discontinued the print. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're going away. But for my generation and the generation that followed mine, uh, especially like in the '90s, everywhere you went, it was this airbrushed image of like right. you're not enough, not pretty enough, not this enough, not that enough. And there was no way, no matter how much self confidence you had, that that didn't affect you in some way. Sure. Something in my brain, either I learned this as a kid or something. My purpose on the planet as a woman is not to be visually pleasing. Right? That's no woman's core purpose. Right. But we do live in a society that sort of caters and rewards to that. Yeah. So that's the one thing that finally gave me confidence is when I reminded myself, I don't know who said it. I don't know where I got, but it was like, you're okay. 
Maybe you got a little roll here. Maybe you got a little back fat over by the you know, bra line. Maybe, you know, whatever I had on my face. Maybe my hair is out of place. I finally, I think, got to that place where I was like, my purpose isn't to visually please everybody. I'm more than that. So I'm going to own that. And I think in my experience, that comes partly with age. I think, I it, think it is too. It is much easier for me now to feel that way than it was even 10 years ago, much less as a teenager or a young woman in her 20s. And biologically, I don't need to have any more babies. So like, what do I get? <laughs> I think that has something to do with it too. Oh, right? interesting. You're, you're yeah. fer- you know, your fertile years. It's like, yeah. well, you're trying to attract the yeah. correct kind it could of be name. it could be just all biological right yeah it might just be that as well okay so on the stage um uh, what were the, some other I, i've been subjected to I, i'm sure you have to just being a woman a lot of mansplaining you know a man yes a, that grass is green i know so i try to do something where i it's called joanne splaining to combat that where I, I see where i walk into the room and i start telling the men the obvious things. And, you know, sometimes they don't, they don't take it so well that this is the problem I have. I have a problem getting men to take me seriously. Help me, help me. I, I, it's hard for me to believe you have a problem. Having, I kind of do to take you seriously. I kind of do. Um, so here's what I know. People take me seriously, men, women, whatever. And it's partly tone of voice. Okay. So I am, we already established that, right? Blessed with a voice that people take seriously. And that gives me a little bit of an edge. I think age has something to do with it. You know, that it, people don't pat you on the head and dismiss you as much when you're this age as they do when you're much younger. And I also think there's a, uh, how I express myself makes a difference. And one thing I've learned is to be more measured about how I speak. So the more I talk, the less seriously they take me. What I tell my clients is say it once, say it well, zip it. And as women, often, especially when we're feeling, you know, insecure or uncertain, or are they believing me or are they going to mansplain me? Yeah. You know, we get into this thing where we're sort of over talking and kind of justifying and trying to really reinforce what we said. And so we kind of say it again and and it actually drains away from our credibility. There is nothing more powerful than looking somebody in the eye and saying nothing. Right. The pause gives your, gives everything you say more weight. Now, can I take your course? Is it available online? How does this work? Oh, I, you know, I do, I I do coaching and training for companies and individuals. So I have done open events where it is a lot of work. Um, The speakers who do that are very good at not only speaking, but selling. I did my first one years ago and I got 72 people into a ballroom at the Sheraton out by O'Hare. And I was pretty proud of myself because for my first event, that was a really good crowd. Yeah. But, you know, I got those people one at a time speaking at little events and smaller events and then other women's groups and selling tickets. It is a lot of work. It is. Um, So at this point, um, I go where there's already an audience and, and talk to them. And usually I do speak about presence, executive presence, professional presence, personal presence, or about how to speak about your work, something along those lines, how to have a magnetic message. I'm at this point. So so this is why I need public speaking. I feel like the church over here, I see the, the ministers, the preachers, I like what they're saying. I like how it's different from the religions that we've all sort of had growing up. Yeah. I thought, well, maybe this is something I would like to do. And I have experience, right, with the speaking sure. and, and it helps people because nothing against radio, but it's sort of a flooded market, television. Well, plus the radio is going away. It's I know. I mean, really, been rep- everything's been I know. You know. And all the celebrities do the podcast now and they have those recognizable names. So people are going to click on that and they're getting the voiceover work and everything else. So I, I just feel since there's so much media what I've 
in training my kids and what we've been turning to is like we go to live theater like every weekend. We, we who we? Uh, my kids, my kids oh, and I and my family. Got it. So we've been going to live theater and I've just been like, I feel like we've become such a corporate owned grocery store, corporate owned this, corporate owned restaurant, corporate that now we've, we, we, that was fun, but now I'm going in the opposite direction. Does that make sense? So now yeah. I like, now I like the private owned restaurant. Now I like going to the little local theater. Sure. Now, now I like getting to know all my neighbors. You know, I'm that lady anyway, though, that if I move in somewhere, I make sure I know all the neighbors. We, we lost that, I think, as a society for a while. Not in my neighborhood, Not in your neighborhood? I've been okay. here for a long time. I live on the northwest side of Chicago okay. in, a, in a classic Chicago bungalow. And when I moved in, get this, Joanna, yeah. I, bought, I bought this house when I was working with Larry Lujak. Oh, my gosh. You no, know, that house, was yeah. a long time ago. OK. And on my mortgage, it said Catherine Johns, a spinster. We just had a field day with that on the air. Can you imagine? It's, that was like an actual uh, label? on my mortgage document. Yes, because you were because I was an unmarried woman who had never been married, and nobody else had a claim to the property but me. And that, and in they the bank lingo, that. that was spinster. So the point is, oh I've God. been here a long time, and it was really remarkable then for a young single woman to buy a house maybe a condo and even that wasn't that or even establish a line of credit well yeah yes it was a little past the can't get a credit card thing like yeah. I was, I, i'm not that old but getting a house having a mortgage very unusual so now everybody on the block not everybody mo most people are on the block now are younger than me right because i've been here so long and yeah houses have turned over but it's the neighborhood is called North Mayfair. You never heard of it, which is a great thing in a city neighborhood. We want a neighborhood that never makes the news. Yeah. And I That's, call it yeah, North. Great yeah. point. Yeah. And I call it North Mayberry because okay. it's really for a city neighborhood. It is really a friendly down home kind of place. Oh, I love, I love that. It. I love yeah, that. So it's you, great. So it, it, you found the perfect house even back then. Uh, yes. Yeah. I wanted a Chicago bungalow. I don't know why. I just was attracted to it. And. Mm. When I got married, I said, you know, I would sell it and we could go buy something that's ours. But Frank liked the, the neighborhood and he liked the house and mostly he loved me and wherever I was was going to be OK with him. So he just moved that. in and here we are. I love yeah. that. OK, so this is a silly thing that I do. Tell me if you can see the screen. I can see that you have started screen sharing. All right. You got a zebra and this is who wore it better. And then I insert like Carney music here. Who wore it better, Eva Zebra or Reba Toshiba? Definitely the zebra. The zebra. Okay. Who wore it better, Hollywood Houdini or this Hollywood Martini? The Hollywood Martini. I can't stand seeing dogs in those collar things. It's so sad. I know the the collars. Just the, yes. The, the cone of shame. You know, it it's is. just awful. It is. Okay, which hat would you wear? Would you wear the sunny side up uh, hat, egg hat, or would you wear the toss salad? Oh, Joanne, hat? I look so bad in hats, but if you I do? had to pick, I would pick the toss salad hat. Not I like the, that one too. Yeah, I like that one. The too. bonnet thing is too much. For me. Who wore it better, yellow hydrant or four year old tyrant? Definitely the four year old. <laughs> Adorable. And then this is has nothing to do with anything. I just have been. Do you know, do you know about the shoe shoe bill stork? I don't. This, but I'm this is about a, to find out. I, this I just this is my new topic of like interest. This is a real bird. It's a prehistoric looking bird. It looks like a muppet. It's real. It is still wow. exists. Interesting. Uh, they, they grow to be four to five feet tall. They have the most bizarre faces. They have the weirdest movements. And I, I thought this was like a Muppet, right? And I'm watching this thing. Yeah. It's it's a real bird. So this Interesting. is- Interesting. He's called the shoe build stork. And I've just been looking into that. Who wore it better, Tiffany Crawl or Marriott's hotel wall? Tiffany is a cutie pie. <laughs> okay. And then uh, unique Halloween costumes. Look at that. Do you know what that, that Lego that that lady, those are Tupperware containers. Nicely done. Isn't that nicely done? Very creative. And there you go. That's that's all we do. I just all throw right. silly stuff in there. Okay. So anything that you want to promote, we do that now. Um, sure. 
I am looking for speaking opportunities in a big way. And women's organizations, professional associations, those are good audiences for me. I am not a stand up on a stage and show you a bunch of slides speaker. I'm more of, I'm mean, happy to get on a stage, but more of a have a conversation, let's talk kind of speaker. And if that sounds like a fit around communication skills of some sort, then I am your gal and you should be on my website or connect with me on LinkedIn. That's fantastic. I'm going to, uh, the website is just your name, correct? Yep. CatherineJohns.com. Okay. And, and then you blog and I check I that every once written, in a while. You know, I am so proud of this, Joanne. I have written a, a blog post or a newsletter. I send it out as a newsletter and post it on the blog every Wednesday since September of 2014. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Have you thought about putting them together as a book? Not that I have, and I probably much, should. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. I wrote a book um, because I was in a program for speakers and they said, if you're going to be a speaker, got to have a book, go home and write one. So I did. And it still sells on Amazon. Oh, fantastic. But I should write another one. And yes, it could be a compilation of all those fine essays I have written about communication and society and women and politics and all of it. Yeah. Um, thank you for talking to me today. Uh, so well, I will, thank you I, for inviting me to talk. I, I will keep uh, checking up on you. And I, 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 it's, it's really an honor for me. It really is. I, I, I'm, it, it's always nice when I can talk to other women who I know have, when you're new in, in the industry of media, and it's just different for women, it just is, you know, they do the studies over the last, I would say even 10 years, it got really bad to the point where 94% of women were being sexually assaulted and 98% uh, were being harassed or discriminated against. I feel like the tide is turning, but it's, it's, I don't know if it has anything to do with these arrests and these things and these investigations. I think it has more to do with the fact that technology is open now. So you don't just have those few people in charge. Yeah. We sort of all have the freedom. Yeah. So yeah. we have the freedom to kind of do it our way, uh, whatever way that is. Like, I don't watch any um, network television anymore. I don't watch cable television anymore. And when it comes to news, I try to keep it for, I don't know about you, about as local as we can. I feel like everything's going to come back to communities and locally. Does that make sense? To it, it does. I, I watch national news. I watch CNN and right. MSNBC and, and I'm pr overly preoccupied and I would be mentally healthier if I would turn it all off. Yeah, I prefer to speak about concepts instead of particular people, but it's hard not to talk about concepts because they're usually tied to particular people. So Often. like you, you said, you're watching CNN and that the head guy Zucker, that yes. either he was fired or he quit or whatever was going on. And, you know, whatever they say is the reason isn't always exactly the reason. So you kind of try to read between the lines. And then he had this girlfriend that he was apparently was an open right. secret or whatever. She then quit a couple of weeks later. And I, I I try not to make comparisons, but right, it's impossible. I think I would die if my, my greatest accomplishment was I was the girlfriend of that guy. And that's what the headlines kept putting Zucker's girlfriend or Zucker's effer. You know, they tried to do that. Zucker's girlfriend resigns. Interesting. And I thought, this is, this is what we're talking about when they don't, certain people don't see it. She has a name. She's an individual person. Sure. But and she's a lot more than just yeah. a girlfriend, but they're already spinning it as she only exists as an extension of the man. Mm. And this is like one of those things that you go, oh, but, you know, uh, Rick Springfield writes the song, I wish that I had Jesse's girl. Well, you could have got Jesse's God, girl. You could have got Jesse's girl if you learned her name, but you didn't learn her name. You're only seeing her as an extension of your buddy, Jesse. So these are like the concepts that I try to change but I guess I'm up against, then they call me like a feminazi. So I try to find every yeah, who like- who cares? What, yeah. what, you know, who cares? Let them call you whatever. Right. I bet you've been called worse. Oh, I've been called <laughs> everything. People have we all, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, everything. And then I, I'm finally at that place where it's like, okay, believe whatever you want. Because, right, you know who you are, you know who you're not, you know what you care about, and you know what you've accomplished. So, um, oh, so, so it was- it has been really good talking to you. Thank Can you. We stay in touch. Yes, absolutely. And I, I need your, I, I really, I'm going to keep like checking in because I need your tips. I'm going to need your tips because the stage thing has always been, I even remember like it, 
you know, in second grade in church. Oh, yeah. It's creepy. One thing. It's creepy. I, all eyes on me. Yeah. But, I, yes. but, but I also crave attention. So go figure that one. I crave attention, but I don't like attention. You know, the yeah. brain is. Oh, believe me, that's very familiar. And and here's what I find. If I put my attention on myself, I get nervous and uncomfortable and all of that. I keep my attention on the audience. And that's... the more I do that, the more relaxed I am and the more at ease I am and the more magnetic I am. Look at the audience. That's my big tip, Joanne. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mwah. You're lovely. Okay. And that's we'll it. Talk. That's all we do. And then here I put I put in fake um, applause. Great. Wow. You know, okay. like they do on the TV shows. Yay. And that's it. Okay. Thank Great. you, Catherine. Thank you. I hope to and, talk to and you again gonna, I'm going to find this on YouTube because yeah, I looked for you as a podcast and I didn't find oh, you. Oh, and oh. I was confused. I'll, I'll send you a link to, to Okay, one perfect. Of them. Yeah. All right. Okay. Talk Thank you.